Justice for Baltimore Police Sergeant Ike Carrington shot while off duty. Hello everybody, I'm Nikki Zizaza. And I'm Denise Koch. Welcome to those of you watching on CBS News Baltimore and on WJZ TV. Well, just hours ago, a Baltimore man connected to that shooting was sentenced to decades in prison. WJZ is live at Federal Court downtown. Paul Gessler has a WJZ exclusive in partnership with the Baltimore Banner on how law enforcement solved the case. So Paul sits down with Sergeant Carrington, who gives a firsthand account of that shooting. Paul. Denise and Nikki, Rashad Neesmith was sentenced to 40 years in prison on the seventh floor of the federal courthouse just hours ago. Investigators say Neesmith and his co-conspirators are responsible for at least 47 acts of violence, including four homicides, five shootings, 13 carjackings, just to name a few. Co-conspirator co Karan Foster was sentenced last year and is serving 40 years in prison after he pleaded guilty to multiple carjacking and conspiracy charges, including the armed robbery of off-duty City Police Sergeant Ike Carrington, who was shot multiple times in August of 2019. Neesmith admits to being there. Neither men admits to pulling the trigger, and law enforcement today praised the federal task force for bringing justice. Without the support of all of our federal, state, local law enforcement partners, we wouldn't have been able to close this as clo quickly as we did, and we wouldn't be able to link all the criminals together that we did. So without them, we would probably still be looking at patterns and trying to arrest offenders one at a time. Now, Neesmith did not address the court today, although his defense attorney acknowledged these are the, quote, worst types of crimes and pointed out the lack of a father figure, learning and anger issues. Last month, as you mentioned, we sat down with Sergeant Ike Carrington and the ATF agents responsible for connecting these dots. Baltimore City, spring 2019, a string of violent robberies, some deadly. We knew that, that some robberies and shootings and homicides were occurring. City police reached out to a federal task force. ATF's special agent in charge, Tony Crosby, said it did not take long to start connecting cases. What we're finding is that that gun has been passed around. As investigators began getting hits on a ballistic database known as NIBIN, popular Baltimore barber Devin Chavis is shot. I remember being on that scene because we, we were investigated as a shooting at first. City shooting detective Sergeant Ike Carrington remembers investigating before homicide units eventually took over. They don't know, like, who they took. Chavis would be at least the third murder linked in a seven-week span. Because a lot of what we do is data-driven. Investigators say they used ballistic evidence, video, and a cell phone of interest to link the violence to Karan Foster. They were at the state's attorney's office to get an arrest warrant the morning of August 8th. So while they're at that meeting, uh, we were notified about this, the shooting of Sergeant Carrington. Ike Carrington was off duty talking to his neighbor when the gunman hopped out of what we later learned was a stolen car and demanded money. And it says, um, don't run. I said, don't do this, I'm a police officer. Carrington says his neighbor dropped his things and ran, and he did too. I said, don't, you don't want to do this, I'm a police officer, don't do this. The 25-year city police veteran and East Baltimore native was shot multiple times before the gunman grabbed Carrington's handgun and got back in the car. The sergeant feared this was it. I thought that that was the end because a lot of shootings in Baltimore don't turn out well. As he was rushed to shock trauma, investigators were confident they were not starting from scratch. Based on the MO of what happened during that incident, uh, that we were pretty much going to get a knife and lead from that gun. As Carrington recovered, he thought of Devin Chavis's murder and a witness recalling those same two words. That was the same thing that happened at that shooting. He said, don't run. And when the young man ran, that's when he started shooting. Investigators say that connection, combined with other gun crime technology, linked seemingly random crimes. This case in particular was pretty textbook in showing that this model and the technology that we are using actually works. The same crew terrorizing Baltimore the months prior, who Carrington was once investigating, was responsible for his shooting. Same crew. When police arrested Foster and Rashad Nesmith weeks later, not only did they recover the gun used, but this photo from Nesmith's iCloud account. That's the sergeant's handgun taken 10 minutes after the shooting. It was great, uh, but we had to know that we weren't going to get those. So we had to know when we were ready to make those arrests that we had enough to move forward. It's very refreshing when we work cases like this and we can give the victims some closure. Carrington now is paralyzed from the waist down and still in a rehab facility. He says he takes no pleasure in the sentencing of those responsible, but he's grateful for justice. In my heart, I wouldn't be able to move forward 
And that's what I feel in my heart, is to forgive them for what they have done. Back alive now, Nesmith was sentenced in two federal cases today. In June, he pleaded guilty to conspiring with East Baltimore's Triple C, a gang which he says in his plea agreement is responsible for more than a dozen murders and a number of shootings, robberies, and carjackings. When he left the court today in handcuffs, he turned to his family members and said, I love you guys. Reporting live from outside federal court downtown, I'm Paul Gessler for WJZ.